Hello dear viewers, I'm Xnick and today's video is going to be about discussing the new expansion Among Head that is ready to launch very soon and I want to give you a quick overview of the new mechanics and cards and some of my opinions in case that you already know what are the cards uh, so, but at least I want to share you my. Uh, ugh, I want to share with you my opinions. Let's go to see what's going on. So we should be receiving the new expansion in 26. Um, unless you live in another time zone, it's going to come on 27. But well, around 26. So there are new mechanics. Um, new mechanics for magic duels that maybe you know from the printed game that are long I've, are found in old cards so uh, we are going to explain all those new mechanics later uh, well you can check out the list of all the cards in the Facebook page for Magic Duels because um, if you search in Google for the cards for Among Head you are going to obtain the wall set and not uh, exclusively the cards that go for duels so i suggest you check it in facebook uh, let's see the um, printed set has 264 cards but we get only 158 so we are going to be missing some cool cards but i don't think we got a new a bad selection the cards that we are receiving are pretty good but well maybe you wanted to see something that well you will have to play paper magic so the large, large prince walkers such as gideon or liliana well we have a smaller version of the of the same same guys but with lower mana cost and maybe weaker abilities but uh, cool anyways but the big guys are not going to be seen in duels uh, we don't get to play with the split cards mm, and so in that nice page called magic duels helper they are listed as part of the among Cats expansion i think they are not going to show up so these split cards are um, uh, are, is, this is not the first time that we see this in Paper Magic, so these cards are very complex because they are two cards in one and you can use uh, any part of the card as individually or combined. So, But they had to modify the rules for these cards uh, when printing this new expansion so there's going to be a bit of modification on how to count the mana cost of these cards and so on but we are not going to get those on magic tools then we also are going to miss some lands especially the most uh, i think the most funny cards that we could get but we are not getting are the cycling lands when we are going to explain what cycling is later but uh, this are do this one are dual cards that has a, another ability that could be cool, cool to play. Um, finally, we are not going to be seeing these uh, masterpieces that are actually reprints of old cards, but with a new design. The mana, the name, the mana cost, and the effects are all the same. Maybe some of them have an, have an updated, uh, the updated text but uh, it's the same card but um, well the artwork is very questionable i should say well maybe you like it i do not and i find that the font that they chose is very hard to read uh, and i don't like the mana symbols being uh, like grayed out uh, yeah it looks pretty but not practical that's i should say then, even in the printed version, there are some cards that you are not going to find. There are no new Jays or Chandra Planeswalkers in the printed version. Okay, come back. And also, there is no other Planeswalkers other than Gideon, Liliana, and Nisa. So where are where's Nicol Bolas? Uh, this is a uh, this card is from the 2013 edition from magic and it's a very 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 powerful prince walkers but also a very hard to cast one but 
Remember that in the previous expansion, either Revolts, there were mentions to Bola's Planeswalkers in cards such as Dark Intimations, and also in the history, with, with the story of the in the campaign, we see Tesseret trying to summon or bring back or call his old friend Bolas back to life or something. But maybe we did a good job and that didn't happen at all. But I was expecting some Nicol Bolas to show up in this expansion. But the absence of this placewalkers uh, let's to want to think that in our next expansion we're going to see them so let's go ahead and explain the embalm mechanic uh, very uh, new uh, text that it's going to mummify your creatures so you have a normal creature but when the creature card is in the graveyard you can pay some mana and create a token that's a copy of the creature with additional properties such as the uh, it's a zombie it's white it retains all the text but uh, it, it has no mana cost zero mana cost and uh, you have to exile the original card from the graveyard so you maybe you play your sacred card for one white uh, it gets killed very quick because it is a very uh, very low toughness creature but then it's sitting in your graveyard and you decide to pay one white and you have your mummified cat back to into the action uh, this can only be used at sorcery speed so it can't work as a combat trick or you cannot use it during your opponent's turn to gain advantage so your mummy is not going to be able to attack he's going to have summoning sickness the turn it enters so you have to find a way to make that worth then in my opinion the embalm creatures themselves are weak in stat wise no high attack or life total the embalm cost is uh, quite prohibitive sometimes but they are zombies and they are tokens and they themselves provide interesting synergies with token for instance here we see the anointed priest that well whenever a creature token enters the battlefield under control you gain one life so uh, she, uh, this one itself is going to give you one life if you embalm it and any other token not an only embalmed ones is going to provide more life and there are many other token synergies in the new car set and also we pick up all the zombie synergies from maybe shadows over Innistrad or the Eldritch Moon that there were a lot of zombie synergies um, there are always been part of magic so maybe a deck combining embalm plus zombies can be very powerful and also most of these guys um, most of the creatures in the new set are human so there's that too uh, but I don't think that you want to have a deck with embalm and human synergies but maybe you do and well if you want to sacrifice one of these embalm creatures well you later you are going to be able to have them back uh, as a token at the very least and well uh, the tokens can be destroyed very easily or if they are bound to back to your hand you lose them fatal push can annihilate any of them because the mana cost is zero and so on so i think that uh, overall is a cool new mechanic but doesn't look too powerful i think it's nice to experiment and maybe one can find some synergies for instance with delirium or milling your opponent maybe anti-mill i should say because if the opponent tries to put all your cards into your graveyard then you are going to be able to at least get some value of this um, lot this embalmed mummy and the delirium of course if you yourself are trying to get delirium online 
that you are going to be discarding your cards and maybe it's interesting to have all these guys in your graveyard at some point and also we get uh, cool looking tokens that I think just for that it's worth it to try them then um, I'm sad the, to see that uh, priced amalgam uh, I had some hopes but if you carefully read the text uh, you have to cast a creature from your graveyard to have the price of amalgam returning from the depths of the catacombs and since you are not casting anything you are exiling your guys uh, there is no it, the price of amalgam won't trigger so it does not work with embalm on the other hand if you have a Rebosus Titan and the opponent is using Embalm, then you are going to have a fun time because uh, whenever a creature card leaves an opponent's graveyard, you might discard a card and if you do, return this Rebosus Titan from your graveyard to your hand. So that can be interesting. Uh, you have to, um, you need an opponent that is using Embalm, but well, maybe you do. The new uh, other new keyword is exert, so this appears in many creatures. Uh, most of the creatures that have exert are going to be warriors, and also happens to be human. So a very uh, strong combination of uh, creature types. And well, when the creature is attacking, when you declare the, it, the creature as attacking, you are going to be offered the option to exert the creature. And if you choose to do so, you get an additional bonus, uh, a triggered effect that is going to help you during the attack. But it's going to make the creature unable to untap during your next untap phase. Uh, in Magic Duels, there's no a true untap phase there's all packed in a single upkeep that combines you draw when the, your turn starts you draw a card and tap your uh, permanent and uh, do the upkeep operations all together so and yeah uh, the text here in the explanation for the cards it, it states that it is in the untap step from all of the upkeep upkeep so, but uh, that is packed all together so there's n it's not going to you are not going to notice any difference with upkeep or untap phase as le unless you're trying to use some instant or activated ability when the creatures are not untapping or something then the bar the effects that you can find are of most of the time are going to enhance the attackers, maybe the own attackers, as in this example, Nefclop and Trangler. If you chose to exert him, it gets plus one, plus two. Some other guys are uh, more friendly with the allies that are attacking with them. So, for instance, the Ancrop Champion is going to grant. Uh, well, it, it adapts other creatures that you control when you exert this one and that could be particularly useful is if you have two of them attacking because you exert both and they untap each other so there's a plenty of interesting new ways to use this but uh, the the effects are very powerful, but the uh, if you exert and you do nothing about the exerter one, your creature is going to remain tapped for two more turns, and that means you are going to have one less blocker at the very least. So uh, you have to be very careful when to when you are choosing to exert or not. Uh, okay. uh, if you don't exert, the creatures are just regular, so maybe you have to come by with some trick to make a very a good use of the excerpt and the most obvious one to use is to give your excerpt creatures vigilance somehow there are plenty a lot of ways to give vigilance to the to arbitrary creatures the most seeing way is by using the enchantment always watching that also gives plus one plus one to non-token creatures but there are many other ways such as Makindi Patrol that grants temporary 
vigilance or sandstone, sandstone bridge. There are equipments that grant vigilance and so on. And also you can use untap effects that also there are many in the game, but they're not often used because, um, well, we do, did not have exert and there are, uh, the untap effect alone is not that powerful with the cards currently present in Magic Duels, but we have uh, quite a lot of interesting variety of effects at sorcery or instant speed, even planeswalkers such as Kyura or Gideon also has the ability to untap the your creatures, so there's plenty of interesting ways to uh, get the most of the exert mechanic but you have to assemble uh, something so I think that for creature decks it's a very good mechanic but you have to be prepared to do something something else otherwise you lose a blocker for two turns that is almost the same as having it died for the kind of speed games that we are seeing then this uh, we are going to see the new uh, relatively new my negative counters the this type of counters uh, are already present in printed magic from old cards but well they uh, operate in the same fashion of the positive counters giving the target of the counter minus one power and minus one toughness and they stack if you put place if you put multiple negative counters the effects are going to add uh, so in that regards they operate similar to the positive counters and if you uh, j just to re let you remember that any creature with zero toughness toughness goes to the graveyard so it can the, these counters can be used to remove creatures uh, you can use, it, use this to remove indestructible creatures uh, by p placing enough counters on the target by, because this does not count as damage so it will kill uh, any indestructible creature that happens to get to zero toughness so like, uh, very handy against some targets but well the power also decreases and just to remind you the power of uh, well and there are not okay let's go back oh what happened or, oh something is, a little of my presentation is going all right so um if you put enough counters on a creature maybe the power goes to negative values but there is a rule in magic current maybe they change it that in the future but in by at the moment there are no negative numbers in magic that this is um, you are subtracting but you never go to negative so in case that you go below zero the you, you stay at zero so for instance these are not a good examples but imagine that you are placing a minus one minus one over baby jays the o2 famous planeswalkers it's not going, going to be minus one one it's going to be o one right and also very interesting i did not knew i didn't know this, this until i read the explanation the counters annihilate between them so if you have a creature with the plus the positive counters and try to put a negative one you are not going to have a creature with both counters other uh, on the other hand they annihilate so if the creature had negative counters and you try to put a positive counter you just remove the negative and vice versa so they are not going to be stacking um yeah i think that's w one option that the designers made and i think we have to learn to cope with that um, it would be fun to leave all the positive and negative counters on the creatures together but uh, that will change the, the way some cards operate and then by looking at the examples that i placed here there are many interesting ways because the cards many of the cards force you to place the counters on your own creatures um, so 
for instance, this Crocodile of the Crossing, 5-4 for 4, 4 mana with haste, but when this enters the battlefield you are forced to put a negative counter on target creature you control, so unless you have another target the counter is going to be placed on this Crocodile and then he's going to be a 4-3 green Crocodile with haste, still pretty scary but not as much as a 5-4. But if you have another target, then you can sell, send the counter to the other one. Um, well, in the set we are going to be also seeing a lot of effects that can manipulate the counters and then you are not going to be suffering that much by using them. So, for instance, this multi, uh, black and green Hapatra, Visitor of Poisons, lets you remove counters when she attacks. Uh, no, uh, sorry, uh, she can put counters on any target creature, including opponents, and then you get some tokens, a uh, creature from that. The beetle is the one that, yeah, it, when this decimator beetle attacks, you can move one counter from your creatures to any other creature. So, well, the, for, uh, that very cool and yeah, many ways to move, there are many other cards that can interact with the counters maneuvers um, be wary that if you are trying to play with Wind and Constrictor you probably are not going to want to use the negative counters because it, the, the snake will duplicate or uh, it would add another negative counter and maybe that kills your guys and you are not going to want that to happen on the other hand if your opponent plays with the negative counters and you are using the Skyship Plunderer, you are going to have a fun time because when this creature deals damage, you can add another counter to other counter, uh, another permanent, so you can uh, do some funny stuff with that creature. Then, um, a last new mechanic that also comes from the past is cycling. Cycling is um, not at first first glance it doesn't seem that interesting, but uh, you can discard a card that has cycling by paying a reduced mana cost, and if you do, you draw another card. So the cycling can be activated uh, the same as instant. So whenever you have priority, you can cycle. So it's great if you are saving your lands untapped until the end of your opponent's turn. You can then cycle if you decide to do so. And cycling is an activated ability of your card, so it cannot be the target of a counter spell. So it's pretty hard to um, stop someone from cycling if the player wants to do it. And uh, well, th as you see, the uh, the good thing about cycling is that it gives you the option in case you don't want to use your card and you prefer to draw for a very cheap cost or a, cheap, a very reduced mana cost, you get to uh, refresh your cards. For instance, you're playing red, but you are far away from getting to six mana, and you need to find the an answer as soon as soon as possible then you do the cycling and then okay this goes to your graveyard and you receive a new a brand new card of course cycling and scrying goes very good along together and um, yeah and even you are going to find cycling and embalm in some cards so you can send this card to the graveyard and later embalm this one in case you decide to do so and have the mana to pay for it. So and this cycling gives you a strong flexibility because uh, if you can cycle your cards then you are not tied to some type of strategy and it makes your deck very adaptable, maybe you are carrying large creatures for some situations uh, or some uh, interesting uh, spell that is not going to work against some type of decks and then you just uh, decide to that that card is not worth and send that one to the graveyard and 
draw a new one that probably is going to be better suited for the given situation. And in the Amon Cat, we are going to be finding a lot of cards that synergize with the discarding or cycling effect. So that it reads whenever you cycle or discard another card, well, something very good is going to happen because, for instance, with this Archfiend of Ifnir, you put a negative counter on each creature of the opponent. Then Drake Haven gives you a Choo Choo token. This is amazing. Uh, there are plenty of other effects. This guy for one red, you get a menace guy that is going to get a pump when you cycle or discard. So if you are playing with menace or vampires that are discarding cards all the time, uh, yeah, these cards are going to be extremely, extremely powerful. And also note that I think that all the cycling that we are going to be seeing is going to make all the Sphinx Tutelage decks extremely powerful and annoying to fight against. So be prepared for a barrage of Sphinx Tutelage with cycling. It's going to be insane what those decks are going to be doing to us. Uh, and well, if you want to go ahead and try it yourself you are going to find so many options that you are not going to know what to use because those uh, effects are going to be amazing and also if you're trying to get delirium if you like the delirium mechanic and need four or more card types in the graveyard then cycling is going to really help you get in there then well, moving to other, these are not new mechanics, but new cards that uh, come as a new type of card. Uh, we are going to be seeing the gods. We have one copy of each in the available for our decks, and in each color, the gods are indestructible legendary creatures. Uh, this time, they have a very low mana cost. They can no always attack or block. You have to meet certain criteria. For instance, this black god needs to have a creature died under your control, or this blue god needs to you to have to be holding seven or more cards in your hand, uh, and so on. So the gods are uh, come back. Uh, gods are pretty interesting but as creatures well you have to do something on the, otherwise they are not going to be acting as creatures at all but all of them have some ability that is uh, the ability itself is very powerful but also it's going to help the god being able to attack or block and just for historical reasons I i'm going to mention that there are um, previously we've seen other god cards in printed magic but um, the the con also with similar abilities but the difference that uh, the other gods weren't counted uh, they weren't creatures unless the some condition is met and typically the condition is that you have affinity that means you need to have a certain amount of uh, permanence with the same color of the god to play but that means that those gods cannot be targeted by spells that, uh, that that target creatures but this one can be so these are not uh, as powerful as the previous gods so sorry egyptian gods you are not as powerful as the Greek ones, but still we are going to love you. Uh, they are not as powerful, but they are going to be very fun to use. And we have a lot of tools to deal if you are facing gods. Uh, well, th that means that our deck building is getting very interesting by the presence of the gods in the meta. Then there are a lot of new enchantments but also a new enchantment subtype so we are going to see aura cartouche i don't know how to pronounce cartouche so i think i'm going uh, as if the word is in french so cartouche let's call it like that 
Maybe later I find the real pronunciation. Then the cartouche are auras that gives the enchanted creature plus one plus one and some added effect that has a, the flavor of the color of the cartouche. And uh, also um, uh, they have an enter the battlefield effect and very, uh, very cheap and auras. But uh, of course they are ours, so there are, you have to meet a certain number of conditions. You have to have, you need a creature that you can target to use these auras. And if that creature gets destroyed or removed, you lose your aura. But the since the launch of Magic Duels, the aura decks are always um, are, have always been very strong and enjoyable. I think we uh, can see a lot of uh, deck that are going to enjoy having this uh, additional set of auras and they come in all the colors that you might want. And also accompanying each of the colors we have uh, trials that have entered the battlefield abilities very powerful and also have cartouche synergies because they get back to your hand when you play another cartridge but notice that you can combine uh, a color so you you can combine for instance red uh, trials with blue cartouche or any other color combinations that you might want so uh, you can have um, multiple trials on play and a single cartouche will let you bounce all of them back to your hand and that uh, then you can replay them once more and get the ender battlefield effect once again so i don't think that is going to be particularly strong but it's going to be very amusing to see what kind of decks can use these effects and also notice that if you combine the art of this cartouche you get the this one that i found in google is very cool and well uh, i have to mention too that if you are looking to play some revolt and you need for some reason you are not being able to trigger revolt then maybe you can rely into doing the cartouche trial thing to have revolt enabled well maybe i don't know think about it then uh i think this is the final one we are going to have a legendary artifact uh, called monuments uh, each of these accompanying certain color and grants a one mana discount for casting colored creatures for instance pontus monument uh, the streets black creature spells you cast cost one less to cast and Hazoret's ha Monument red creature spells you cast cost one generic less to cast so <clears throat> if, uh, I found these uh, artifacts pretty interesting because also have a triggered effect that whenever you cast a creature and you have another additional effects for instance with the Ronas Monument if you cast a creature spell, target creature you control gets plus two plus two and gains trample until end of turns. So pretty cool artifacts. I don't know if they are too powerful because the, you only are only going to get value out of this is you if you are playing a heavy creature deck. But in that case, these are going to be very cool. But then you have to. Uh, leave room for one artifact that my uh, if you are running just this artifact is quite likely that it's going to get destroyed in the current meta there are too many vehicles and most of the decks run some artifact removal uh, so i don't know if these monuments are going to be uh, playable but re they look really cool and also note that the um, if you are playing um, a combination of them and you play a multicolored creature, then that creature is going to pick up the both the effects. So it's going to have a two mana or three mana or even 
uh, is there no I think that we don't have a, a four or five colored creature in the game but maybe we are going to see some of them at some point uh, this uh, be careful if you play the void creatures they are not going to pick up the benefit and the triggered effects they are not looking for the color of the creature so uh, that's also important to note so I think that the monuments are going to be best used in decks that use two or three color creatures and remember I told you that there are many humans in the set uh, hmm what kind of decks are we, are, are we going to see <laughs> Okay, so to end, I think my feeling is that um, the, this expansion brings a complex new interaction. That means that it's a difficult set to master because uh, the decision-making aspect is increased. All the new cards are going to force you to make a, a quite high number of decisions at any moment in the games. Uh, but I like that. I think that the that makes the games much more entertaining the um, i think there are many bombs in the set but the mana costs and the, the strength of the new cards i th i find them balanced um, there are very 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 powerful cards but th there are a lot of ways to uh, fight against those cards so i think there's a, they did a pretty good job in the cards that they chose to include maybe i'm wrong but uh, i hope not and also i think that that being said we should be seeing a lot of deck diversity um, i i'm not certain because we the combination of kaladesh and either revolt together is really really strong and powerful and i should say overpowered with many 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 cheap uh, spells and powerful vehicles and energy and whatnot so it's big, new decks are going to be are going to have to be able to fight against that but uh, the time will tell and um, well let's hope you have enjoyed this overview and that's it